Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Congress Infrastructure Review. We start with the knock! All right, uh, welcome. Um, this is Stoffel, I'm Momo, we are from the internet. And obviously, um, First things first, when speaking at a conference, you have to show your KPIs, right? We of the NARC now have 99.47% uptime, two small incidents, we're very sorry, but, but it exceeded our 9.5s SLA, so we're all good. Um, yeah, infrastructure, right? Infrastructure starts with building a backbone. Uh, this year, obviously, uh, due to high bandwidth demands last year, we started to just go ahead and build some more bandwidth. So this year we have 200 uh, gigabit alien wavelength via two carriers. Uh, to Berlin, where we meet uh, transits and peerings, and also we do have 100 gigabit by Deutsche Telekom uh, locally, which means we increased by 150 gigabits. <laughs> also, we're quite a lazy bunch of people. So this year, everything we did was completely automated. Every configuration, any access which you had came completely from Netbox, which is an amazing open source project by DigitalOcean. And it was our single source of truth. All configs were automatically generated by it and no humans uh, were harmed during the creation of the configurations. The knock guys are shaking their heads, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, some numbers. Uh, this year we had 286 Wi-Fi access points. Uh, we had nine routers, eight of them on site, uh, one in Berlin and 186 access switches. So yeah, those are numbers, but to put it in perspective, Congress grew by location, I don't know, kind of twice in size. Uh, also, this means for us that we had to bring up 107 more access points and 53 more access switches. Regarding the Wi-Fi, we've seen almost 25,000 unique MAC addresses on our Wi-Fi controllers. And speaking of access points, Adding to our almost 300 uh, access points, we also saw 558 interfering access points. <laughs> so, please, we, we say that every year, but please don't run your own Wi-Fi. If you have to, um, we have a page in the wiki for the network where we tell you how to do so, which channels to use, put your TX power low and everything. Please read that. Um, of those 558 interfering access points, one read that and complied. Thank you, Seabase. <laughs> so next year, please read the documentation. So yeah, usage numbers. Um, our average bandwidth usage was 3.1% or 15.9 gigabits. In peak, we see 10,800 consecutive Wi-Fi users at the same time. And our peak bandwidth usage this year was 7.6% or 38.4 gigabits. So this means we have 3,148 more Wi-Fi users than last year and 3.8 gigabits less than last year. But on a positive note, everything we did worked quite well. We're done at day minus one, and we're quite happy with all the results. Um, everything we did here would not have been possible without our sponsors, so please give them all a warm uh, round of applause. <laughs> and with that, I'm going to hand over to Stoffel. Thank you. I'm very proud to announce that we, this year, have, our, have, have completed our first joint venture with the Chaos Vermittlung. We now provide, like every good telco do, should do, different services for different users. We also have very, very amazing zero-rated stream-on service so that everybody can watch the Bob publications. This is what our users say. This is a testimonial. 
We provided DSL network to a kitchen, translation booths, and project Leitung. And I think we might do so until the Breitband Ausbau has finally succeeded. And yeah, now it is available at your closest C point. So now grab your stuff and go to go for it. On a more serious note, um, we're running out of hardware. So if any of you um, or your organization has good quality gear with at least 10 gig uplink ports, um, there is a nonprofit called Event Infra where a lot of our equipment um, comes from. So please get in contact to those guys and girls. And um, if you want to donate them to this uh, nonprofit, very good. And as a bonus point, if it also supports this gear power over Ethernet, you get special karma points. And one thing, please, during teardown, it will start very soon. Don't plug, unplug anything that's connected to our network. If you want to be helpful, come to Halle 4, to the NOC, and ask. Yeah? Don't randomly unplug equipment, switches, access points, and fibers. Yeah? Please leave them alone. Use more bandwidth, but with useful stuff. You know, <laughs> we had it last year. Find, make something new. Yeah, yeah, so. So please use more bandwidth, but with useful stuff. I have to, only thing I have to say is thank you very much and see you at camp next year. So, Paul, make yourself ready, please. Um, are there questions for the knock? Yes, okay. If there's no question, please raise your hand. <laughs> okay, vice versa. If you have a question, raise your hand. If so, go to the microphones, please. Do it quick. I, can I have a uh, Saallicht? I don't know how it's called. Lights, please. Photons showing people if they're... Oh, there's one over there, I think. There, okay. at microphone then four. Microphone four, please. Uh, is it just me, or was the Wi-Fi shit at the toilets this year? <laughs> we are aware of our shitty uh, shit advisor ratings. Um, feel free to donate more Aruba access points. Thank you. Another one? Oh. Ah, okay, thanks. Mic number one, please. Um, what are you using to provide the data in Grafana? Uh, Prometheus. Sorry? Prometheus. Thank you. Okay, if that's it. Okay, there is another one. <laughs> ah. You're last. Go for it. No, it's microphone number two. Is it possible to still improve 2.4 gigahertz performance or are we just at the physical limits? Sorry, uh, the 200 gigahertz you mean? The 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, I think. Just use 5 gigahertz and that's it. Yeah, I'm trying, but some hardware. Try harder. Thank you a lot. Okay. I'm <laughs> <laughs> so time. Thanks, uh, Mark. Uh, welcome, POC. It's your stage. Hi, and welcome to the POC infrastructure review. We have some, uh, prepared some numbers for you. And for that, I'm going directly over to Thomas. Hi. POC means Phone Operation Center, and we deployed uh, the, a whole new PBX this year. Um, that's all IP-based, so it's completely new for us to have that in this large scale. We have tested it at several other events. And what you see here is the um, sync overview. So there are the small dots in this map, which covers the whole area, are our um, DAC base stations. And all of them are syncing over the air, so that are the green lines in the picture. And what you see on the right is uh, the hotel decked. So we had hotel decked in an H hotel this year and in the lock-in hotel this year. And we had a tram decked deployment. So um, luckily you could have phoned in the tram as well. <coughs> so in the former days we uh, used to have the famous POC case as you see on the picture here, and that involved ma many cables, so we have to patch all the antennas uh, dedicated uh, through to out to the PBX, and uh, this isn't uh, needed anymore, so we switched to a more convenient deployment using virtual machines, 
and we automated all the things. Uh, as you know, that uh, registration is now completely uh, self-service, and that is supported by several virtual machines, so um, they are listed there. And we use Ma MariaDB as database for uh, all the extensions and routing. We have prepared some usage stats. So this year we uh, reached the um, numbers of registered DEC handsets at day one. So the number of DEC handsets which were registered in the last year on, at the end of the event, uh, we have reached that in day one, 10 a.m. So. And that, that was 2.5 thousand, and um, today we are at 3.8 thousand, so we even increased that number, and we uh, look forward to have more deck handsets even next year or at camp. So, um, yeah, to so see some numbers about the calls. <clears throat> then um, we have prepared a graph of deployed deck base stations. So over the time, you see the number of online DEC um, base stations. So at the end of the event, so after deployment finished, we had uh, 62 base stations. And you see a drop in this graph, and that is due to an issue you um, maybe noticed uh, that was on the 28th afternoon. And that was due to performance issues in our database. So there was like a full table scan, which shouldn't be there. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, we unfortunately didn't notice that before. And we just fixed the stored procedure involved. And we started the DECT registration then. So the DECT process registered uh, all um, base stations again. That's why the drop is in there. And by the way, the, our deployment was online since the 22nd of December this year. Um, new features. So you have noticed that self-registration is now possible, so you, can't, you haven't to queue uh, to get your deck registered. Um, we have the... <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, we have the hotel deck deployment. Because we use IP, it's much easier to deploy uh, deck in several other places using VPN technology uh, in hotel and tram as well. And um, we have support for several different other handsets so we haven't had before. So um, using the old PBX, uh, it wasn't possible to use uh, like Panasonic uh, handsets or Fritz phones. Um, yeah, you can do that now, but we have found out that some phones only receive calls and could not make calls. So don't know if it, that is useful, but um, yeah, we figured it out. So we had a fax service this year, so you could uh, send us faxes. And uh, we received, I think, three or four faxes. <laughs> um, it's still a thing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And we had um, a special occasion this year. At some point, um, we run low on extension numbers. So uh, we used to have four-digit numbers. And we decided, what should we do if we run out of numbers? And um, our approach was to extend that to five-digit numbers to make more numbers available if we hit uh, 500 available numbers. And this happened this year. So we had lower than 500 available numbers uh, to create new extensions. And we extended that to five-digit numbers. Um, yeah. So we had an, a new LDA, LDAP uh, phone book. This is completely new. You could use that on iPhones. And we are still figuring out how to use that on Android as well. We had a premium SIP service that was available to Sir to uh, several other fixed phones. Um, and we had, of course, an amazing time to market because we were online on 20 se uh, 22nd. Yeah, that's a picture from the Trump Deck. And yeah, that's it. Workshop, make yourself ready. Questions to Pock. Any questions come up then? Questions from the internet. <coughs> Hello? It's microphone number six, I Mike, think. Mic six. Um, was your fax service vulnerable to the recent fax bugs? <laughs> I don't know them, so maybe you could explain. It's from the internet. It's uh, it's somewhere else, you know. It's in the cloud. <laughs> yeah. Don't know. Security by obscurity. So, uh, number one. Hi. 
Is this working? Yeah. Hi. I'm asking for, on behalf of all my friends who have five character nicknames, is there a chance to always have five digit numbers maybe or a request? We, we already thought about that for opening up the four-digit extension and the five-digit extension from the start and then only allowing five-digit extensions until we hit the 500, which would be available if we only had four-digit extension. So maybe next time you can already register five-digit extension from the beginning. Thank you. Number one again. Okay. Um, you had this nice graph where we saw uh, how many people were booked in and so on. There were different colors, but I didn't see a legend which color means what. Uh, can you explain? Um, yeah, the, uh, you, you mean this one? Or, ah, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, you can uh, come to the POC desk. We still have our display uh, up okay. and running, and then you can see the legend below the screen. Okay, thank you. So, this is it for uh, the park. Your applause! <laughs> you have not time, no? You have not time. Oh, okay. cool. So, up next is the VOC, right? Right! Right! <laughs> we are the Weedy Operations Center and we do wink. Do we wink with us? Come on and wink with us. Yay! So, we're doing video and video is hard. And we would like to explain and show you why video is hard. Let's start with why video is hard. So we had uh, five main stages this year, three cameras per stage. And you may have noticed that in Hall C there was some uh, reverb. The solution to that costs lots of money. You need to buy almost all the molten in uh, Germany probably to uh, remove that. Somebody asked us to remove the uh, reverb from, um, from, from the audio, but it's impossible. It's physics. This was the second Congress we ran uh, Voctomix for every hall. Uh, it's an open source lecture uh, video mixing solution that we partly developed ourselves. Um, there were a dozen ERFAs. <laughs> there were a dozen ERFAs and uh, other crews uh, running similar setups. Um, and we had our first uh, satellite connection to a Dutch ship, yay! <laughs> and um, there was, uh, the satellite connection works with by hopping satellites and uh, we were successful in uh, using just one hop, so it, the whole tour, all, the whole interview was in, uh, went without a problem. So. So technically similar to last year, although really a lot, tech, a, lot, a lot better, we're doing a complete separate audio mix. Like there are people in this room mixing the audio for you, and there's a complete different crew mixing the audio for the streams and the recording. And they all sit in a centralized room, so all audio from all the main stages is traveling there, is mixed, and then the control signals are traveling back. So they can see what's on the stage. They also have a, a zero latency video link from all the stages. There's a room where you have uh, the, cameras, the, the cameras in the back visible for them. Fun fact, if you connect a handheld camera to them, that makes the audio angels seasick because they have to watch that for a complete talk. We have 142 microphones all over the halls. These are microphones for the hands, like on the podium, some in the, in the ceiling, the question microphones, and all of them are mixed together for a special mix just for the streams and recordings. We generate 15 independent mixes there. You see all the volumes of all the mixes in our multi-view. We did record every microphone for the complete five days, not just the talks, also the nights, just to have a backup available. The backup is traveling through the complete halls via multicast. Fun fact. Multicast is hard. To coordinate all those people, we need a really good working infrastructure. And we have this um, uh, intercom system with belt packs. Uh, we have uh, this, uh, this installation, and it's probably one of the biggest this year. And uh, to, uh, additionally, to those uh, mobile belt packs, we have the fixed installations. They are using DECT on the wireless. And sorry, Pop, we stole your time slots a little bit, I think. They also use multicast in the back end. Fun fact, multicast is quite hard. 
that didn't work on day one for the complete day. So as you can see, we had a lot of uh, special requirements in, uh, in the network side. Thanks to the NOC for being, being very patient with us. Thank you. Um, fun fact, multicast is really, really hard. Uh, first time we have uh, Arabi uh, Arabi Arabic, that's right one, and Chinese translations. And releasing is about 90% uh, done and expected to nearly finish tonight. So we had 40 VOC crew members, 172 video angels, and uh, 1,600 hours of angel shifts. We love you angels, thank you very much. And the no shock. Yes, um, these are the guys who provide the technical infrastructure for all these lecture halls, and we are shock. We are those who get the show running. So we are the stage manager and herald operation center. Thanks. And that's an example of who we are. <laughs> yes, that's one of our heralds. <laughs> And, uh, well, you see the heralds a lot, or, or those who are in the lecture halls, while the other part of our team, the stage managers, you probably should never, ever see or realize, because they are fixing all the problems so that the show is running smoothly as um, best as possible, and that you don't see that things are not going fine or well, and we cover over this, and the herald presents the show as bad as possible, so that you have a very nice experience. Um, so we fix all the problems. We uh, ensure that everything is there and everybody is there for the show and we keep the schedule. Um, yeah, to this year uh, we had to increase from maintaining four stages to six stages because we didn't only add Eliza as another stage, we also had Chaos West um, over there as another um, very cool assembly stage that was also meant by a whole uh, stage management and Herald team. Um, so we had to optimize uh, a lot, and we had uh, 250 talk, uh, 205 talks there, uh, 167 official talks, and additionally the Chaos West talks. Uh, three quarter of them were in English, so all of them had to translate it into German and the others into English, and everything in some other languages as well, which is the translation team, which we also think is a very good team that uh, will not present something here, but uh, I think is due an applause as well. <laughs> yes, um, our team is um, 55 uh, stage managers and 42 heralds. Um, Okay, it's not the best uh, slide, but whatever. And we have another cool crew that is helping us with the crowd control uh, this year. So I believe everybody in here realized that the queuing up and entering and leaving the halls was much better than last year. So this is some of our optimization that took care uh, that we did. But it wasn't only us, it's also this very cool audience that we have. It's an excellent audience, and without this excellent audience, nothing would be s as smoothly as we experienced this year. It was very easy for us, and thanks to the audience. <laughs> so now our, one of our biggest issues that we had to fix, or something that we actually could ex focus on, is that we have enough speaker water. Cheers. Subtitles, you make yourself ready, you already are. Are there questions for VOC and shock or shock? Some shocking questions, maybe. Not, I don't see any mic. Oh, someone is heading to microphone number three. Uh, yeah, question for the Speak into the mic, please. So a, qu a question for VOC. Um, you're running the audio as a, 
67 is the video being run as ST2110 or similar video over IP? Um, no, actually, um, the video is uh, running from SD via SDI from the cameras into a computer behind the stage and uh, mixed there by a software you saw. And from there on, it's, it's on the same computer recorded to disk and stream to the internet. So the uh, video is not leaving this computer. It's entering via SDI and then directly uh, used there. The audio is, all, is only uh, traveling uh, via the network for uh, backup recording and monitoring. It's actually also mixed behind the stage and not really, the, the production audio is not traveling through the network. It's just for backup and monitoring. Thank you. Another question. Internet number six, please. Uh, yes, so the internet wants to thank the VOG because uh, otherwise they wouldn't be able to listen <laughs> um, and to see. <laughs> And they also want to know um, what kinds of lenses and camera bodies were used. Uh, I, don't ca I can't answer that question, I'm sorry. Um, but if you, if you want, you can uh, send us an email or come to the IRC and ask there. There are a lot of people answering all questions about video there. Okay, thanks. Feel invited. Another one? Okay. Then thank you, Vogue, Shock. <laughs> and subtitles. Your stage. Right. So, uh, welcome to the subtitles infrastructure review. And well, so we are doing subtitles for the released videos by the walk. And um, our primary focus is on on having finished subtitles for the original language of the talk. And then after that, maybe we can also work on translations for these subtitles in different languages. But really, the first step is is getting the original language right. And there's essentially three steps to, to actually finish subtitle. Well, first of all, we, we need to transcribe what is said in the video. Uh, so we really, we use a speech recognition software that gives us a basic transcript. And then we have angels working on that to, to bring it into a nice readable transcript that has not too much text in, in one subtitle and goes with the flow and really fixes all the bugs that the speech recognition software introduces into the subtitles. So that's the, the transcription stage. Then once that is finished, we, we again use software to align this transcript to the, the audio file. So um, there's, there's some matching of when the subtitle actually appears in the video. And then again, we have angels working on that, aligning, checking if this timing stage really works. So adjusting the, the timings of the subtitles. And well, then also, afterwards doing quality control, so fixing typos or whatever else happened in there. And now we, we have this handy chart here, which is the, the basic progress for 35C3. Uh, and this is data from around noon today. Um, so all of this might potentially be outdated already. Um, everything is in seconds. And well, the, the big orange block down there is just basic seconds of things in the far plan. Um, then the, the next small thing over there is already finished subtitles, which at the point of this chart was six subtitles. Um, and again, six of those in the original language, we don't have any translations yet. So there's also no, no seconds translated here. Then there's a whole amount of, of subtitles in the transcription stage, which is this blue part here. And then furthermore, um, quite a lot of subtitles in the timing stage, which is the, the green bit here. And then a small bit still in, in quality control, which is the, the part on top. And um, to, to put that into numbers, we had over 106 angels working for us this year, uh, of which 75% chose to do at least the second shift. Um, in total, we had 381 hours worked. Uh, working on 79 hours of material. We have so far had six releases for 35C3 and hopefully getting more. And because on day one there weren't videos available yet, we already finished 10 subtitles for last year's Congress. Then there's still 49 hours of material transcribed, which is a 63% increase over last year. 
um, 27 hours of, of subtitles being timed, um, so 23% more, and 17 hours checked, so in quality control, uh, which is a 42% increase over last year. Uh, right, so once we have subtitles, we can do funny stuff with them, like generating word clouds. Um, so this is from the, at the time of, of uh, the creation of the slides, the, the talk that had the, the fastest speaker, and you can maybe guess what it was about from looking at the word cloud. Uh, so this is a talk in German, and it has a 166 words per minute, which comes out to 1,095 strokes per minute. So really, if you, if you want to type that, then you need to be really fast, um, or maybe you need to be multiple persons. Right, um, so, well, to organize all this, we, we use a state-of-the-art, eventually consistent, log-free distributed database. Uh, <laughs> Which, which has served us quite well this year and also last year. And at this point, I want to thank all our hardworking angels for the support, and also especially to the Heaven for, for accommodating all our wishes. Uh, thanks. So, uh, Sorry? Um, yes, just, just one more thing. Um, so if you, if you have time to spare, between this Congress and next year's Congress, then you can still work on subtitles from home. Uh, just go to c3subtitles.de. And if you're looking for finished subtitles, you'll, you'll find that on this link at the bottom here. And I'll also put these slides online then and, and just check the Twitter account for the link then. And now, well, yes, if you have any questions then, or, well, whatever. Yeah, right. are there any <laughs> questions for the subtitles or blah, forever? Any questions? Um, internet is not asking anything this time. Doesn't seem so. Okay, this is your applause. Thank you for the subtitles. So, um, coming next is C3 Gelb. And of course, this is a hold in German because it would be C3 yellow. And um, actually, you have not been told that it's in English, so you preferred your things in, in German. So that will be thanks, thanks a lot again for the translation team. I'm sorry, didn't do it. Feel free, your stage. Thank you very much. Um, ja, wir sind das neue Team, was sich jetzt erst diesen Kongress gebildet hat. Deswegen sind wir noch ein bisschen spontan unterwegs. Um, wir sind C3 gelb. Und ähm, wir heißen so, weil wir gelbe pa äh, Briefe ausgeben. Vielleicht wissen manche von euch, welche das sind. Das sind die Belehrungen für Paragraph 43 des Infektionsschutzgesetzes. Ähm, das braucht man, wenn man bei uns in der Backstage Kitchen arbeitet oder als Engel kochen möchte für die vielen anderen Engel. Und außerdem sind wir dafür zuständig, dass möglichst wenige krank werden von uns. Ähm, ja, unsere Daten stellt Nina vor. Hi, Huch, das ist ein bisschen laut. Ähm, wir haben ein paar Zahlen für euch gesammelt. Äh, da geht es tendenziell jetzt darum, was wir so machen. Es ist halt Handschuhe austeilen für die Bottle Sorting Angels teilweise, aber auch für andere Schichten, wo man sich tendenziell die Hände verletzen könnte und Desinfektionsmittel an bestimmte Abteilungen, die wir hier haben, verteilen. Ähm, da haben wir jetzt grob fast 1000 Paar Handschuhe auch ausgegeben und gewaschen regelmäßig, um, die, um das einfach zu sichern. Uh, seht ihr ja 2100 uh, Desinfektionseinheiten, das sind diese Pimpstöße, wenn man so eine, Wasch so eine Desinfektionsflasche mal umrechnet. Uh, 42,23 Fikadellendiplome belehrt und uh, wir haben mit dem CERT uh, telefoniert und von denen gab es auch keine Fälle von Kongresspest, das heißt wir haben unseren Job relativ gut gemacht. Und da das Spock sehr gerne wollte, dass äh, wir deren Statistiken mit publizieren, weil sie die seit diesem Jahr ähm, auch hier sind, werde ich jetzt das Mikro an ihn weiterleiten. Ja, hallo, ich habe die ähm, 
äh, geschmackvolle Aufgabe, euch äh, gehaltvolle Grüße vom C3 Wok äh, zu übersenden. Die sind leider verhindert. Ja, das C3 Wok würde heute am letzten Tag unter gar keinen Umständen Waffelstillstand akzeptieren und deswegen sind sie vollständig mit der weiteren Pro Produktion von Waffeln beschäftigt. Ähm, Dankeschön. Ähm, ja, wir haben äh, ein paar Daten zum... Darf gucken, Entschuldigung, okay. Ah, da gibt es ja auch sowas, super. <lacht> Danke, neu hier, sorry. Ähm, ja, also das C3 Wok hat ungefähr 500 Kilogramm äh, Teig ähm, jetzt mittlerweile so an die Leute ausgegeben. Ähm, man muss ja immer so einen Fußballfeldvergleich bringen, also wenn man jetzt, sagen wir mal so 100 Mikrometer Schicht äh, Dicke auf einem Fußballfeld verteilen würde, dann würde man so ein mittelgroßes bis großes Fußballfeld mit einer 100 Mikrometer äh, Schicht Dicke damit mit, äh, so bestreichen können. Ne? Ähm, Fußball. Die, ähm, ja, des Weiteren gab es halt so als Aufstrich so 18 Kilogramm Marmelade, 20 Kilogramm ähm, Nutella, 35 Kilogramm Apfelmus. Ich habe jetzt nicht ausgerechnet, wie viel das in Fußballfeldern ist. Ähm, Special Kill Skills von äh, dem C3 Wok sind jetzt äh, Dönerwaffeln, Chunkwaffeln und äh, Rum Rum Waffeln. Ähm, circa ja, 200 Stunden Arbeit von freiwilligen Helfern, also Leuten, die einfach vorbeigekommen sind auf eine Waffel, äh, sind halt so damit äh, bei denen reingegangen und das ging nicht auf Engelsystem, also da gab es nicht mal ein T-Shirt für, also die haben einen extra Applaus für den, denke ich. Danke. So, und last but not least, äh, C3 Gelb findet ihr übrigens auch auf Twitter und auf YouTube. Wir beginnen jetzt, um einfach mal dieses Hygienethema ein bisschen vorzubringen mit auch einer Videoserie. Und da haben wir jetzt äh, vor zwei Tagen spontan mit den Jungs von Methodisch Inkorrekt ein kleines Infovideo gedreht. Falls ihr darauf Bock habt, das zu sehen, schaut einfach mal. Wir würden uns sehr freuen. C3 nee, bei C3 Gelb. So, any questions for C3 Gelb? Are they or not? Internet not? One, two, three, four, empties. Thank you! So, Kasse Presale is next. Your stage. Hi, my name is Rami. I'm speaking here for the presale team and the cash desk team. We are the ones who handle everything related to wristbands. Um, we sold all tickets again prior to the event in our pre-sale, a part of them through the voucher system that we've been using for two years now. And um, I don't want to go into the details of how it works. You probably, most of you know it, um, but it's possible to get a voucher if you redeem a voucher. So we're building voucher chains. And this year, the longest chain was 14 vouchers long. So um, there are some groups that were very good at replicating them. Um, the average payment duration between creating of an order and, and payment was 1.8 days. This is two days less than a couple of years ago, so banks are really getting better there. We also sold a number of tickets openly on a first-come, first-saved basis. During the first round of that, we We had network traffic surpassing all of the records that we had before. We had a peak of 16,000 requests per second on our queuing proxy. Um, and that's already averaged over a five second period. <laughs> If you want to know more about the software we're using, we talked about this in more detail on the infrastructure review f two years ago, so I'm not going to go into it again. You can just watch that video thanks to C3 Walk. But there's some numbers that we want to give an update on. We handled 1,521 support cases with only four angels in the months prior to the event. So every tenth of you has sent us an email and received some support. And we have some, some very bad news and we are, we are really disappointed. Um, I'm now getting, going to show statistics that we already did two years ago, and unfortunately it's gotten worse. In the pre-sale, 23.2% of orders were created by emails, either ending in Gmail or Google Mail, or on domains that, with an MX record pointing to Gmail. And we're really disappointed that a fifth of our community um, supports those kinds of monopolies. 
We have some more providers here. GMX is huge in Germany, of course. Posteo is, is still getting larger. Um, WebD is a bit on the decline. Mailbox.org is now showing up in the statistics compared to two years ago. And roughly the same amount of, of users are using an email system hosted by, their, by the CCC, by their Calstrev or Alpha or something like that. So this was the pre-sale now for the cash desk. Um, this year we operated seven cash desks to scan your tickets. We had 48 cash desk angels and eight troubleshooters and we had a peak speed of 41 transactions per minute, which meant we took on average 10.2 seconds to give out, to scan your ticket and give out your wristband. <laughs> you think it's a lazy job to be a cash desk angel, but our angels walked uh, 35 kilometers um, during their jobs back and forth between the back office and the cash desk. If we, if we put all of our wristbands together, we can roughly get to the central station. <laughs> and I think we had certainly over 9,000 wrist skin irritations. <laughs> we estimated the force that is required to crimp a wristband, which is roughly 160 newtons. Um, so it takes about 1.29 joule to crimp a wristband, and if you n need to resupply that energy by drinking mate, it would only require, if our calculation is correct, 45 milliliters of mate to crimp all of the wristbands. <laughs> Here's our chief physics operator doing the experiment. <laughs> our waiting time was always less than 10 minutes, which compared to 39 minutes last year makes us very happy. <laughs> but most of that is due to the fact that we didn't need to sell a public transport ticket. So we put those numbers live this year. I'm out of, running out of time. This was our most valuable angel. It kept people from going in too fast. See you next time. Um, there will be no questions for yep. Q, uh, no Q&A for, for the check desk and the cash desk. And the check desk is always nice. Cash desk. Delivery. Urgent delivery from the Carl's Post. Thanks a lot. <laughs> we had a Carl's Post. So. Let me check. It's to the stage, infrastructure review, that's clearly me. Um, it's an original, so, so I'm going to read it. So during, <laughs> during the Congress, the Chaos Post processed um, more than 2,000 postcards to more than 37 different countries in the default world. We successfully operated four different mail drop points. Fun facts. We bought all the postcard stamps at the Leipzig Central Post Office <laughs> and they had the, the store next to the venue refused to sell us anymore. <laughs> How great is that? We delivered traceroute, ping, port scan and PGP encrypted handwritten postcards. <laughs> great. We had some broadcast issues because someone submitted 200 printed Bitcoin scam emails. <laughs> <laughs> we delivered spam messages and text porn. <laughs> we successfully operated in autonomous night mode during the day three to four office shutdown. Use more mail. Thank you. Now from, from the postcard to the GSM service, thank you, it's your stage. Hi, I'm Paul of the GSM and we are running the mobile telephony network here on this Congress. So, what do you need to operate a mobile telephony network? Well, the first thing you need is some um, 
is the, a purpose. So we, as you probably know, in Germany, the network is not that great, so we decided, hey, we want to do our own one. And better than that, we're using some open source stack called Osmocom, open source mobile communication. And we are using this Congress to really test how good this open source can run against other networks. All you need to do to join our network is just buy a SIM card and then you can run on it. It's flat rate, you can call everywhere in the world for three euros, you can get incoming calls and this is only for two days but you can even get internet this year. So. <laughs> On top of the usual uh, 2G network, GSM, we provided 3G network, UMTS, for the last two days. And the speed could be quite good. Uh, we don't filter anything, but sometimes it could be quite slow, we'll see. Well, it is still very experimental, and we still need a bit of fine tuning, but most of the time it works. Now, what you also need to operate a network is not only the stack, but the right to operate it. Um, the base station operates on a licensed frequency, and you need to have a license for that. Sadly, in Germany, all the licenses have been given away to the three most big mobile telephony networks. But we contacted Telefonica, and they were friendly enough to give us four frequencies, and thanks to them, we could operate the GSM at this Congress. So thanks, Telefonica. <laughs> and for UMTS, we cheated a bit, because the band we're using, 850 megahertz, is not licensed in Europe. This is mostly used in the US, but we have base stations which can go on the band 5, so we didn't have to ask any operator this time, we just had to ask the Bundesnetzagentur, and they were also happy to give us a frequency for UMTS. So that went well. <laughs> now, coming to the equipment, uh, the boxes are quite small. It's not the huge base stations which you see outside. Here you see on top a 2G base station with 200 milliwatts, which is quite good when nobody else is transmitting on your frequency. And on the bottom you have UMTS base station, which is only 20 milliwatts, but it's still enough. We deployed 10 GSM base station and 13 UMTS base station all around the Congress. And we hope we had coverage for everyone. If you didn't have a coverage, please call us and let us know so we can go there and put some more points. Um, a mobile network is quite complicated. You see each bubble here is a different service which needs to be configured and last year it was a disaster. Um, we spent the whole Congress trying to make the network quite work, making some calls and at the last day you were able to make calls and it was kind of stable, so it was not very good. This year it was very stable and the only thing which was unstable was actually the internet connection it worked from time to time, and sometimes it was low. So it's a huge progress for the uh, Osmocom stack. And we can say we can now operate stably uh, a network. So that's, that's a good thing. We had so much free time that we even tested new features like handover, so you can run or take a hoverboard across the, the whole Congress without being interrupted. We also had 3G voice, which we didn't have last year, and you could on your phone enable or disable 2G or 3G using a USSD code. So we also now support USSD code, and we dropped a lot more base station than last year. So it's a, it's a good progress. The only... The, the only issue we had actually was kind of that we created a loop of one of our switches, so we disabled not only our network, but we disabled a whole building the internet network. But <laughs> the, the knock was very fast, knocked on our door and taught us how to really make a network work. So that went fast. <laughs> And we had so much time that this is our ticketing system and we had to create fake tickets so it doesn't look that empty. But uh, <laughs> you can drop by and it, it works quite well actually. So sharing the ticketing system. 
Now, the, um, this is uh, the opportunity for us to, to test really the Osmocom stack. So if you see sometime that the network goes down, goes up, it's not because it's instable, it's because we have too much free time and we want to test features. So else, it, it worked quite well. Now, uh, the installation worked also very smooth. Day zero, everything was installed. Day one, we enabled GSM for everyone. Um, then UMTS optional, which you had to dial. UMTS everywhere, and it worked really great. Now, a bit of statistics. This is not too important. We had 900 SIM cards. The purpose is really to test on a large venue, not just in a lab, so that's good. But we had a side collateral damage, is that very old fold could not use a network to phone. That the problem is that because we had 3G voice, we used a quite, uh, a quite newer codec, and the old phones were not able to use this newer codec. So without you new, with your new phone, you could only send SMSs but not make voice calls. So that's a pity. Maybe it will be fixed, but at least the rest worked. About eSIM, we don't know how to provision them, so just buy a normal SIM. With 4G LTE, um, Osmocom itself doesn't support it, but there are other stacks, so we just have to, well, just, we have to integrate it with Osmocom, so it interoperates, and please join us. The Osmocom community is, is quite small, and there's plenty of things you can do, so please, please join. And the same thing, if you want to see 5G, contact us. I mean, it's a real opportunity to have 5G on a large scale and say, we're the first one, it works on our, our, our space, so, yeah. Thanks for everything, and join us. <laughs> Any questions for GSM? Let me check. Internet is not asking something. Tools, MT3. Number five, maybe I can't see it. Can you help me over there? Is someone number five? What? No, monsieur. Pech gehabt. No, it's not. Okay, then thank you, GSM. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We are heading to the last team which would be the lock. But before that, after that, the infrastructure show is over. And it's the last, the last show at Borg. So I would be very, very happy if when they finished, I think you have a colleague who will join later on, yes. maybe as a surprise, but after this colleague <laughs> comes on stage and when he's finished with his talk, could you please make so much noise that the guys over in Adam really think, what is happening here? <laughs> this is a contract we can achieve, yeah? Okay, d d hold on, but I want the Adam's guy, everyone over there thinking, why am I sitting over there and not here? <laughs> We're going to do it. So, welcome with a warm round of applause, Locke. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, we're from the Logistics Operations Center, and um, we're going to tell you how all the big stuff gets here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can turn it up a little bit. Um, what? Yeah. How much closer? OK. Um, so yeah, we're from the Logistics Operations Center. And uh, I guess you're asking yourself, what does the lock do? Because uh, I don't think we had an infrastructure review yet. Um, so we do mostly this. <laughs> Getting all the weird stuff here and back again. This is about uh, one cubic meter of Lego Duplo. Yeah, uh, we like to say we're the infrastructure of the infrastructure. We make sure that all the big stuff all the big things and stuff that the teams need for their operation get here in time, ideally before the teams get here, and then uh, disappear afterwards. Almost? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So our most uh, three main points are the transports, uh, storage, um, managing supplies, and then we have our help desk that is very helpful to everybody. This is not a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, this is our storage facilities. We run uh, like the whole year round. We have uh, two storage facilities, one in Berlin, one in Leipzig. Uh, the Berlin one is more for the teams, like the nicely packed pallets. And, uh, mostly nice. Yeah, mostly nicely. <laughs> and uh, 
uh, all the big bulky stuff like the wood and part of the backdrops and stuff those uh, are in Leipzig in German we call it Raffel yeah and here you see them in full and in empty yeah we have uh, a bulk of transport this year uh, from the transport we know of there are 13 7.49 ton trucks <laughs> not 7.5 tons <laughs> 23 40 ton trucks, 10 sprinters, uh, yeah. all included, 68 pallets from Berlin with our very own 40 ton truck driver Angel and our very own 40 ton truck. And, and mind you, this is only for the build up. Uh, yeah, but our own 40-ton own, uh, truck driver, this was really awesome this year. He uh, came by and said he wants to do help out, and he's going to be here from the beginning all the way to the end, driving our stuff around. Looks like this. And uh, very fortunately, no one got hurt this year. We had no accidents. Everything went fine. Except for this. And this was done by the professionals. <laughs> but no one got hurt except a couple crates. No. Oh. Yeah, yeah, then very quickly we go over some software. We're short on time, so we're going to do it quickly. Uh, like the other teams, we do software also. And um, oh, wait, what? There's the software. Oh, all right. There's a mix up. Um, then we do all the other stuff that we do beside the transport and storage, and we do the software afterwards. <laughs> Seems like. Uh, yeah, we, have, we are doing a bunch of stuff uh, like pre everything. <laughs> so before everybody else gets here, uh, cause and knock is very, very slow. <laughs> uh, yeah, so mostly we do the stuff that we already talked about, there, but then additionally, mail, deliveries, shuttles, hostels, supply orderings, stuff that people forgot, but is really important right now that they need it. Build up and tear down. Then all the nice light foils you see around the toilets and the halls. The vehicle fleet, desks and table distribution, we got handed over from the assembly teams who did an awesome job. Then garbage containers, because everything needs to go back out. And uh, yeah, here from the uh, ordering and supplies, you did all the shopping. Yeah, uh, Mauer, who's somewhere there, <laughs> and me, uh, did the shopping this year. We ordered about 1.3 tons of limes. <laughs> For chunk, <laughs> <laughs> and it's—I think it's nearly empty. Yeah, <laughs> and we we bought all the crushed ice and the basil from the metro. <laughs> so, if you if you are in Saxony and you want to buy crushed ice or basil from the metro, not this week. <laughs> <laughs> So no crushed ice for New Year's. <laughs> we All right. have some. Then uh, the quick mix-up, our software, we don't do it very quick. We had a nice um, mapping tool we've been using for a couple of years to map out spaces in the logistics hall four. Um, this year new, we uh, got rid of a huge unmaintainable Excel sheet where everybody had their uh, transports. Oh no, Google, Google, uh, Google Docs. Google Docs. So we uh, wrote a software for it um, where we can have a nice um, overview of our transports. Uh, <laughs> then um, last year... <laughs> last year uh, we, 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 we renamed ourselves to the Lost Operations Center. <laughs> so yeah, this year we had a tool yeah, to we find our stuff like our forklift <laughs> yeah, our trucks. We lost a seven and a half ton truck and the scaffolding last year. We didn't want to talk about that. 
<laughs> well, I mean, we, we found them again, but they were lost for uh, quite some time. So um, this year, uh, ND built an awesome uh, tracker device with GPS and uh, LoRa. And um, this was a nice beta, and it will be functional for the camp. And then suddenly it happened this year because there was a need for it. Uh, during the Congress, somebody wrote a shuttle planning tool uh, to route some cars and shuttles around. All right, here come the, the juicy details for you. That's for <laughs> the nerds. Yeah, uh, we had about 33.9 kilometers of Shuko cables, about <laughs> 3.7 kilometers of 16A cables. Yeah, okay. maybe we can. So, yeah, you can. And then uh, 1,600 power strips, which is Mehrfachsteckdosen, so lots of those. <laughs> Uh, thanks again to the awesome C3 power team and all the angels who helped out running those cables around and through the ducts in the floor and all the greasy work. Some more stats. I want to mark the 330 Torx bits. <laughs> yeah, Verbrauchsmaterial. Um, yeah. So if you see talk spits, we are <laughs> running short about 330 talk spits. <laughs> so yeah, we used 5,000 screws and 48 uh, pneumatic staples. Uh, those were all used for the, from the building crews who built all the nice uh, backdrops and the room dividers and all the fake walls and the beautiful stuff you see around, all the decoration in Hall 3 and the uh, disco drama in Hall 5. What? Yeah. And f for that, this is what they only for what we bought new this year, not the stuff we reused from last year. Got 15 kilometers of uh, Theaterlatte, 2.1 kilometers KVH, and uh, about 4,000 uh, 4, square meters of HDF. So quite a lot of stuff. And uh, yeah, I would like to thank uh, at this time uh, all the amazing, amazing artists and build up crews and I don't know how to describe them, but all the people that built all the awesome stuff that make the uh, Congress look so amazing. Huh? You have to speed up a bit. Yeah. Not yeah. Long, talk a bit, but on time too. We're yeah, almost some done. more stats. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is the most That's important one. Eight hundred. 53 rolls of tape this year. That's about 800 kilograms, two pallets full of gaffa. Or 33 kilometers. Which, which is, is <laughs> almost 12 times around the Messe. <laughs> yeah, and maybe some of you already noticed we had a very empty Hall 4 this year because of the uh, lecture hall in the Hall 4. So this year we have twice the up out, twice the fun. Yeah, we had to, the, because the lecture hall is in the same hall, we had for fire safety, we had to clean out all the storage. So it was outside in containers. So as we're speaking right now, everything is moved back into the hall so we can move it back out of the hall. <laughs> yep, and that's it for us. Yep. Congress is far from over. Most of us got here on the 15th, and we're going to stay till the 4th to clean everything up. But come help as you helped before and help during the Congress. We need more help. <laughs> and I shall keep this brief. Dear community, we built a city, a home. And during this build-up and the maintenance of that city, no major accidents have happened. And that's um, a very, very great thing. Please keep it at that. For everybody leaving, please get some sleep before you leave. Please let the drugs wane off. Um, just be responsible. And for everybody staying here for the teardown, stay safe. Thank you very much for helping. You're the angels.
thank you from the last show in Borg, your applause.